Okay, since I uh, spent ages making the slides and the demo, uh, and the presentation went <coughs> rather well, got a deep throaty voice today, how wonderful. Um, I thought I'd record a screencast of the stuff. It won't take more than 10 or 15 minutes of your time. And if you want to make a machine learning application, it's a good place to start. Um, it's stolen from the lovely Microsoft tutorials and bent a little bit to make it more interesting, at least for me. So you can get nice stuff on their tutorial sites as well. There are some links on GitHub, or at least there will be by the time you see this. Ha <laughs> ha! That's the magic of time travel and being in control. Wonderful stuff. Making an art critic a machine using machine learning. Now, the thing here we're doing is we're looking at machine learning in uh, an interesting and hopefully amusing context. Um, just a quick overview of the machine learning point of view from which I am coming. Computers used to be good at things that we're bad at and bad at things that we're good at. So a computer can play a really good game of chess, but it can't recognize people. Um, machine learning is actually moving this uh, uh, border around a bit in that we now have computers that are good at stuff in a useful way. Here's a to-do list uh, with a few bulleted items and whatnot and uh, handwritten notes that apply to things and stuff. And using machine learning and, and AI techniques, the system can actually figure out where the words are, where the bullet points are, where the lines of text are, that kind of stuff. I mean, there is a caveat here, which is that we don't know precisely how it works. It's a kind of um, powered magic in that we have uh, training mechanisms we know can actually build behaviors that will produce results that we think are okay pretty much all the time. But they're not definitive, but they are useful. And besides, I don't know how my car works, and I drive it every day, so uh, we should be okay with using this. And if we are careful about our, uh, our aims and where we end up with this thing, we'll be fine. So that's the context in which I'm doing this. It's sufficiently reliable to be useful, like pretty much everything around that we try and use. Okay, so we'll keep moving. What I want to do is uh, build an art critic. I am not very good with art. I know a good pitch when I see it. Um, <laughs> And, and uh, uh, with that in mind, I thought I'd try and make a program that can recognize what's in pictures. And I've based this very heavily on some machine learning stuff that I've sort of already put out, which is very nice. But I thought I'd do my own because theirs is a little bit out of date, at least the one I did last year is. So I thought I'd do this. Uh, and besides, the more the merrier. Eh? Now, we could make a program that recognizes the Mona Lisa, but I want to keep things a bit simpler. <laughs> That's the kind of art I'm working from. These, um, these art, this artwork was made for Develop Inside a Tour last year, and I've kind of borrowed them for this. So we're going to make a machine learning thing which can recognize different types of picture. That's where we're going with this. Uh, and the sequence we're going to follow is we're going to use training data to build an, a model. We're going to incorporate the training data in an application for Windows, and we're going to deploy the application on a target device and run it. We're going to use Microsoft Azure to build the model in the cloud. Um, and then we're going to actually drop the model into Visual Studio and see how our program combined to it. Really important point here, the actual AI is what they call edge AI. It's happening in the device itself. We use the power of Azure to actually produce the model, which is what we should do. But then we don't have to use Azure for the AI bit. So my picture recognizing program will run on a freestanding uh, uh, computer. You could even run it on a Raspberry Pi if you want to because it's a universal Windows app and it will run on other platforms and just straight Windows. So once we've done that we can then deploy it and run it. I actually ran this in the demo I did um, uh, for Michael's AI Frenzy on a Surface Go, the cheapest Surface you can get, which is a wonderful machine and ran both Visual Studio and the model absolutely perfectly. Uh, and you could draw on the screen with the pen to actually put your inputs in, which was kind of cute as well. So that's the sequence we're going to follow. We're going to build the model in the cloud. We're going to put the model in Visual Studio, bind an application to it, and then get round to recognizing people. That's how it's going to go. To do this, the starting point to get the model built is Windows Microsoft Custom Vision um, website, customvision.ai. If you go there and sign in, if you have an Azure account, you can use that. Uh, to actually register. You get a bit of free access to the thing, which is kind of funky, uh, although I think if you try to use it big time, you will have to pay. Uh, but that's all fine. I, I, I've not paid a penny yet. And if you're a student, of course, you can get Azure credits and whatnot for free anyway, which is wonderful. Make a new project, click on the new project button, uh, and then away you go. Uh, I call my project Art Critic because that's what I want to turn it into. It's a classification project, so it will basically actually um, just 
classify images as certain types. You can do object detection where you can actually put uh, a project which will recognize things in, in, um, in, in images as well. Uh, single tag per image, there we go. Uh, general compact. Important note, only compact models can be exported from, from Onyx into an application, so make sure you hit the, the, the compact button. You can go back and change these at any time later on once you've made those options that you can just edit it, so it's not hard and fast, but get it right first time. That's always been my philosophy, uh, and it's served me very well, oh yes. Um, once you've got your project, here we have um, an empty one, uh, Art Critic. It has no pictures in it. In it. So you whack the uh, Add Images button and you start finding pictures on your machine to actually work on. Uh, big images might not work for you. It, it, it's more a case of useful images as far as the algorithm is concerned. And this you'll probably have to find by iteration to get peak performance. So make sure that the images, each one of them, tells the story. And be careful about things like if half your images were taken on a sunny day and half on a <laughs> cloudy day, you might end up with an AI system which can tell sunny from cloudy. So be very careful about building images. Data acquisition and, and, and uh, um, pre preparation for AI is an important thing. So think hard about that. Mine are all line drawings, um, black lines on a white background. So they, they seem to, that that's okay. But if you're taking photographs and putting them in there, then do be aware of the fact that um, the AI is not clever in a human sense. It will just use whatever it can find to determine differences, and that might not be what you want. So bear that in mind and keep moving forwards. Here are my stick figures. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've got a variety of, uh, of happily drawn stuff. Uh, and uh, so that's my stick figures. I can keep, and I add these guys and give them a category, in this case, stick figure. I then add some more pictures. Now I've got all my artwork in. I've got stick figures, fish, and flowers. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, and so the idea is it'll, I'll draw a picture, click the recognize button, and the system will try and figure out which of these um, particular types of image I have drawn. Uh, and so we've got the data in. It's now training time. So all we do is press the train button. Um, and the system will then run in the cloud, um, and when it's finished running, it will tell me, okay, this is how good I think your training data is. This is how well I can use it to recognize new incoming images. So it's saying there's about a 90% chance that I'll recognize the thing. And out of the ones that you've given me, I got about 90% right when I applied my model to them. So this and these numbers, of course, the bigger the better. 90% is kind of workable for my little demo. But um, as you can see down here, you've got multiple iterations you can apply. Each time you do this, you, you add another one, and it, th these guys should hopefully start to get bigger and bigger. Um, and uh, if you want to, you can do a quick test. Click this button up here. That will open up a dialog box. You can type in a URL for a picture. Uh, and then it will actually give you a score based on what it thinks it is. So you can test the thing uh, in the web page if you wish to do that, which is fantastic. Now, we have our model. It's in the cloud. We don't. We want to put it in our application in Visual Studio, so we hit the Export uh, tab. I'll just go back and show you what that is. It's that little thing there. Uh, click that one there, and away you will go. Um, you have an option of different types of export, uh, Core ML, TensorFlow, Onyx, and Dockerfile. Um, the one we're going to use is the Onyx one, because that's the one that works with uh, Visual Studio, and it's Onyx version 1.2, which you have to use. So you select that, pick the version of Onyx, hit the word export, and then bang, you're in business. The file will then appear on your machine, and the Onyx, by the way, is it on? I don't know how you say Ons, Ox, on, Onyx. I have no idea. Anywho, um, it's open source. One of the really important points about AI type stuff is you try and o use the openest stuff you can get your hands on, because... Um, you will want to move this stuff around between devices, platforms, and all kinds of things. So there's a whole bunch of open tech around there, and this guy is one of them. So the models you design using this can be used all over the place in a huge range of contexts, back, backed by all the big players. So um, it's a good place to put your stuff, basically. Um, so here we go. Here's my stuff, and here's where I've put it. This is my model, hand-downloaded from the cloud. It's sitting in the Assets folder of my application. I'm using the tutorial app that's part of the Microsoft uh, um, frameworks you can download. Uh, I'll put the URL in the GitHub repository for that. Um, and so I've just basically opened my tutorial up. Uh, I've dragged the thing into here. Now this is a Visual Studio project with that thing in, in, in it. So now what I do is I do what I would normally do with an asset in a program, which is I would actually um, say 
add it to my project. So I hit the Add button um, in Visual Studio, and I get the option to add my art critic. Hit Add, and now something rather wonderful happens. The Assets folder now contains a reference to my model. Perfect. I'm, I'm doing the thumbs up here, but you can't see that. Um, I've also got a class called, uh, I've got a source file called art, artcritic.cs, which has magically appeared in my solution as well. Now, that actually has been generated by the import process, and it provides a bunch of binding classes I can use to connect my application to my model. Um, and so that's how that's how it works. That's what it does. That, that's, that's how it goes. So it's, it's kind of like magic. The problem I have found is that the magic doesn't always work. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why this is, uh, and it caused me a bit of head-scratching yesterday, but um, whenever I dragged and dropped my model, sometimes it didn't work, it wasn't picked up. But what I found was the demo projects you can get from Microsoft, and my projects based on those, always work. So if you use my app as your starting point and drag your own models in and write your own code, you'll be fine. But if you, use, if you just make a brand new universal application in Studio and then try and drop the files into it, for some reason that I cannot ascertain, it doesn't work. One day it will work, and I'll, I'll edit this bit out of the presentation, uh, but for now, do keep that in mind because it can be kind of frustrating when the first step of adding your model to the project doesn't do what you think it should. So that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll rise above that. Uh, we'll use my little workaround. We'll use my project starting point and then away we go so look inside the classes that you get and you find you get three classes which are built uh, specifically for use in in your solution one's called uh, model art critic model art critic input and art critic output these are made in my application they were actually made in the uh, behind code for the form uh, and when the program runs it actually builds these guys and these guys are going to actually handle bringing the model into the computer um, performing the model on a bunch of input data in the form that the model would like to see and then getting the output in a form we can then use in our code. Um, and so we're going to put a picture in because that's what we're doing, it's an art critic, and we're going to get a, 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 a string back which says which of the categories the model thinks this, the picture fits into. Uh, of course, your program to do what you like, um, but I'm just showing you how this works and how easy it is to get started and start playing. This is the code in the Recognize button. Um, this is the one that runs when we hit the tell me what your image looks like. Now, there's another piece of code that runs when the code is actually loading the model, which I'll show you very briefly in the code we'll look at in a second or two. But this is the code that runs when I want to actually take what a picture. Uh, I've got a picture. What kind of thing is in that picture? I, I have a helper function which gets the handwritten image from my Windows control on, on the actual uh, uh, on the actual page uh, and so I get the image in uh, in fact if I do this I can see it in, in slow-mo this is quite nice actually this is a way if you want to have handwritten input to your program it's very easy to take um, a, 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 a bunch of ink and make it into a bitmap uh, and that's what that does so that takes all my drawn stuff and gets me a bitmap because the bitmaps going into the model to be analyzed to pull out whatever it is that's in there uh, so that's what that does this bit here actually says okay the particular kind of input that my model would like is an image feature value uh, object which you take from a video frame uh, and this then is set on the data property of that class that uh, was made for us automatically which is used to push data into my model okay so that's that's gone in that's all good now i say to the model righty ho you've got your input do your thing. This is an awaitable thing because it might take a little while. Um, and so that thing will then rattle for a while and produce its output. Uh, when it's done that, it then asks the output produced by this call. Get us, there's a class label. It's actually a, a, a tensor string, uh, which is, um, oh, I'll do that and you can see. It's a tensor string, which is a, a machine learning representation of a bunch of strings. I only want the first one. So I say to the tensor string, give me yourself as a vector, please, and then I'll take the one at the start. There's actually another property which you can get, which is how, how reliably, how confident the model is that it's got it right. And so you can actually have code that will look at the thing and go, hmm, uh, I need clarification here. I'll tell the user I couldn't figure out what it was. My program just goes meh <laughs> and uses whatever's been said. Uh, so I pull the string out. I put it on the text property of the label on the screen saying what it is, and then all's well with the world. And so now, uh, without further ado, unless you want some more ado, I'll go and find you some more ado. This is my program running. This is my program, uh, you can see in front of you. Um, and 
all the bits that I mentioned are all present and mostly correct. We have the main page constructor. This is basically a standard uh, universal Windows application with XAML and all that good stuff. Uh, and we we have an ink canvas which we set up. I'm going to draw in black with a fairly small pen. Ignore the pressure and the tilt. This sets up the image I'm going to draw into. Uh, and then this guy here loads the model. Now this uses the built-in classes that we've already talked about. Um, so here I've got my get myself a model storage file from my asset, which is artcritic.onnx. Having done that, I then effectively um, make the model from a stream asynchronously, so that will go off and, and, and drag the thing in. So when that's finished, when the form's loaded, it also brings in the model, which is stored inside the application. And when we hit the Recognize button, this is the code you've just seen on the screen previously. Uh, get the video frame, um, create a data input, object which the model can understand pass that into the model to evaluate it get the results from this guy and put it on the text thing uh, and and that's it that, that that's all you all you need uh, in your application if i now hit the run button then this is now deployed locally oh my goodness okay that's a message from that's that's a message from robin we're doing air quality work isn't that interesting um, that appeared um, note to self and everybody else who's watching um, don't <laughs> don't leave slack running when you're recording a presentation um, because it causes problems let's have a go i'm going to draw a stick figure what's brown and sticky a stick what do you call a boomerang that won't come back a stick hit recognize <laughs> those are my two stick jokes by the way it says stick figure we clear it away i'm now going to draw a fish i'm not very good at fishes let's see what do you call a fish with no eyes a fish. <laughs> these are the good ones folks and i'm going to give it an eye and a big smile and hit recognize and it goes hey wow you're a fish now the really hard one so it's a time for a drum roll this hasn't been performing particularly well i must admit let's see if i can make a flower so there's my centerpiece and these are my petals uh, there they go they're going all the way around now like i said about the training data it might and let's give it a nice wavy stalk and then we'll give it some leaves coming up here as well so that it looks like a like, like, a, like a flower and I hit recognize and it goes flower yes wonderful now some of my flowers look a bit like stick figures and if you play with this a lot you'll find that lots of things look like a fish that probably shouldn't do but that's not the point of this presentation uh, I'm not really building an art critic although I did have this idea that it might be really interesting to think in terms of feeding this process some artwork in different styles maybe an impressionist style and a cubist style and a blah blah style and then feeding it some pictures and seeing if it could figure out what style that is i mean that the ai is like that you, you could have fun playing with this you can put pictures of your cat in and see if it recognizes your cat from other cats or see if your cat's in the photograph there's all kinds of fun you can have with this um and i'm just pleased it worked so i'm going to go back to my slide deck which is this guy here and i'm going to wrap up now and then run off into the distance with enormous speed but first a quick summary first point making models is easy I, I, I don't think making good models is easy, but getting started is. The model is made in the cloud, not in the device. This is Edge AI. You don't need a network connection. The device could be a Raspberry Pi. It could be an FPGA chip. They're awesome. Or, or a device with a GPU, because the GPU processor is great for doing AI models and, and goes really fast. So you can do that as well. Um, ONNX, or ONX, whatever you call it, um, is uh, easy to use in studio. Uh, and what you do with the model and the output is entirely up to you. Um, could be vision, could be a big wadge of data you've got, could be air quality data. We're, we're, we're not quite sure. Um, but the bottom line is, yeah, uh, have fun with this. This code, if you want to recognize fish badly or whatever, you can get it from github.com, crazy Rob Miles, MLK. That's all there. RobMiles.com is the place you should go for everything else in your life, okay? Uh, <laughs> or at least once a day to see what the idiot's written this time. Um, thank you for watching if you've watched. If you've not watched, you're not seeing this anyway, so I don't care. Uh, and I'll do some more of these uh, when, the, when the muse takes me. Thank you, folks.